Stoicism was founded by Zeno of Citium in the 3rd century BCE in Athens. Stoicism is named after the Stoa, which means porch or colonnade, where Zeno used to teach. Stoicism is influenced by Socrates and the Cynics, and it engaged in debates with the Skeptics, the Academics, and the Epicureans. Stoicism is divided into three main periods, Early, Middle, and Late Stoicism. The early Stoics include Zeno, Cleanthes, and Chrysippus, who developed the core doctrines of Stoicism. The Middle Stoics include Panatius, Posidonius, and Cicero, who adapted Stoicism to the Roman context and introduced new topics such as politics and rhetoric. The Late Stoics include Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, who focused on the practical aspects of Stoicism and its ethical implications. Stoicism is based on the idea that the only good is virtue and the only evil is vice, and that everything else is indifferent. Stoicism teaches that virtue is a form of knowledge and that the wise person is the one who lives in harmony with reason and nature. Stoicism holds that the universe is a rational and providential whole, governed by a divine logos or fire. Stoicism asserts that human beings are part of the cosmic order and that they have a duty to fulfill their natural roles as rational and social animals. Stoicism advocates a life of self-control, detachment, and resilience, in which the Stoic learns to accept what is outside of their control and to act according to their own nature. Stoicism proposes a fourfold classification of virtues, wisdom, courage, justice, and moderation. Stoicism also recognizes four cardinal passions, pleasure, pain, desire, and fear, which are irrational and harmful to the soul. Stoicism aims to eliminate the passions and to cultivate the appropriate emotions, such as joy, caution, and goodwill, which are rational and beneficial to the soul. Stoicism employs various techniques and exercises to train the mind and to achieve inner peace, such as meditation, self-examination, journaling, and reading. Stoicism values the practice of philosophy as a way of life, rather than as a theoretical pursuit. Stoicism has influenced many thinkers and movements throughout history, such as Neoplatonism, Christianity, Renaissance Humanism, Enlightenment Rationalism, Existentialism, and Modern Psychology. Stoicism is not a selfish or isolated way of living, but a generous and social one that fosters cooperation and compassion. Stoicism has also inspired many leaders and personalities, such as Cato the Younger, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Frederick the Great, Nelson Mandela, and Tom Wolfe. Stoicism has experienced a revival in recent years, especially among people who seek practical wisdom and guidance in the face of challenges and uncertainties. Stoicism is not a religion, but a philosophy that is compatible with different religious beliefs, or none at all. Stoicism is not a dogma, but a set of principles and suggestions that can be adapted and modified according to one's own situation and preferences. Stoicism is not a passive or fatalistic attitude, but an active and optimistic one that encourages taking responsibility and making the best of what is given. Stoicism is not a cold or emotionless state, but a balanced and rational one that allows experiencing positive emotions and avoiding negative ones. Stoicism is not a rigid or fixed system, but a dynamic and evolving one that responds to new challenges and discoveries. Stoicism is not a pessimistic or cynical view of life, but a realistic and hopeful one that recognizes the potential and dignity of human beings. Stoicism is not a complicated or obscure doctrine, but a simple and clear one that can be understood and applied 
by anyone. Stoicism is not a boring or dull lifestyle, but a meaningful and fulfilling one that offers joy and satisfaction. Stoicism is not a niche or elitist interest, but a universal and popular one that appeals to people from different backgrounds and cultures. Zeno of Citium was originally a merchant who lost his ship and his fortune in a shipwreck and then turned to philosophy as a way of coping. Zeno was influenced by the cynic philosopher Crates, who taught him to live a simple and natural life, free from conventions and attachments. Zeno also studied with other philosophers, such as Stilpo the Megarian, who taught him logic and dialectic, and Xenocrates and Polymo, who taught him Platonism. Zeno founded his own school of philosophy, which was later called Stoicism, after the Stoa where he taught. Zeno wrote many books, but none of them have survived, except for some fragments and quotations. Zeno was admired for his wisdom and integrity, and was nicknamed the Phoenician because of his origin, and the palm tree because of his slender figure. Zeno died at the age of 72 after breaking his toe and saying, I come, why do you call me? As if he heard the voice of fate. Cleanthes was the second head of the Stoic school after Zeno. Cleanthes was originally a boxer and a laborer who worked at night to support his studies during the day. Cleanthes was known for his piety and devotion and wrote a famous hymn to Zeus, praising the divine order and providence. Clenthes also wrote many books, but only one of them, On Pleasure, has survived in its entirety. Clenthes was respected for his loyalty and perseverance, and was nicknamed the Ass because of his hard work and stubbornness. Clenthes died at the age of 80, after starving himself to death, following the advice of his physician. Chrysippus was the third head of the Stoic school, after Cleanthes. Chrysippus was a prolific and brilliant writer who wrote over 700 books on various topics, such as logic, physics, ethics, theology, and grammar. Chrysippus was considered the second founder of Stoicism because he systematized and developed the doctrines of Zeno and Cleanthes. Chrysippus was famous for his paradoxes and arguments which challenged the common sense and the opinions of his opponents. Chrysippus also wrote many jokes and satires which showed his wit and humor. Chrysippus was admired for his intelligence and creativity and was nicknamed the Pillar of the Stoa because of his importance for the school. Chrysippus died at the age of 73 after laughing too much at his own joke about a donkey eating figs. Panatius was the fourth head of the Stoic school, after Chrysippus. Panatius was a friend and advisor of Scipio Africanus, the Roman general who defeated Hannibal in the Second Punic War. Panatius was the first Stoic to travel to Rome, where he introduced Stoicism to the Roman elite and influenced many statesmen and orators, such as Cicero and Cato. Panatius wrote a book on the duties of a good citizen, which was later used by Cicero as the basis for his own work, On Duties. Panatius also wrote a book on the signs of character, which was later used by Galen as the basis for his theory of the four temperaments. Panatius was respected for his moderation and prudence and was nicknamed the Roman because of his adaptation of Stoicism to the Roman culture. Panatius died at the age of 59 after a long and successful career as a philosopher and diplomat. Posidonius was the fifth head of the Stoic school after Panaetius. Posidonius also wrote on many subjects such as history, geography, astronomy, mathematics, psychology, and ethics. Posidonius was a friend and teacher of Pompey, the Roman general 
who fought against Julius Caesar in the Civil War. Posidonius was the first Stoic to explain the passions as disturbances of the soul caused by false judgments. Posidonius also introduced the concept of oikiosis, which means the natural inclination of living beings to preserve themselves and to associate with others of their kind. Posidonius was admired for his erudition and curiosity and was nicknamed the Athlete because of his physical and mental vigour. Posidonius died at the age of 84 after a long and fruitful life as a philosopher and scientist. Cicero was not a Stoic, but a follower of the academic school which was sceptical and eclectic. Cicero was a famous Roman orator, lawyer, politician, and writer, who played a key role in the transition from the Republic to the Empire. Cicero was a friend and admirer of many Stoics, such as Cato, Brutus, and Seneca, and he used their ideas and arguments in his speeches and works. Cicero wrote many books on philosophy, such as On the Nature of the Gods, On the Ends of Good and Evil, On Duties, and On the Laws, which were based on the teachings of the Greek Stoics. Cicero also wrote many letters which reveal his personal thoughts and feelings and his struggles with the political and moral crises of his time. Cicero was respected for his eloquence and patriotism and was nicknamed the father of the country because of his defense of the Republic. Cicero died at the age of 63 after being assassinated by the agents of Mark Antony, who considered him an enemy of the state. Seneca was the sixth head of the Stoic school after Posidonius. Seneca was a wealthy and influential Roman statesman who served as a tutor and advisor to Nero the notorious emperor. Seneca was also a prolific and popular writer who wrote many essays, letters, dialogues, and tragedies on various topics, such as anger, providence, friendship, and death. Seneca was a follower of the late Stoicism, which emphasized the ethical and practical aspects of Stoicism and its relevance for the contemporary society. Seneca also introduced the concept of the inner citadel, which means the inner strength and freedom of the wise person who is immune to the external circumstances. Seneca was admired for his wisdom and generosity and was nicknamed the happy because of his cheerful and optimistic attitude. Seneca died at the age of 69 after being forced to commit suicide by Nero, who accused him of being involved in a conspiracy. Epictetus was the seventh head of the Stoic school after Seneca. Epictetus was a former slave who was freed by his master and became a teacher of philosophy in Rome and later in Nicopolis. Epictetus did not write any books, but his teachings were recorded by his student Arian in the Discourses and the Enchiridion. Epictetus was also a follower of the late Stoicism, which focused on the ethical and practical aspects of Stoicism and its application to the daily life. Epictetus also emphasized the concept of the dichotomy of control, which means the distinction between what is in our power and what is not, and the need to act accordingly. Epictetus was respected for his simplicity and sincerity, and was nicknamed the Iron because of his endurance and resilience. Epictetus died at the age of 80, after living a long and peaceful life as a philosopher and a teacher. Marcus Aurelius was the eighth and last head of the Stoic school after Epictetus. Marcus Aurelius was the emperor of Rome, who ruled from 161 to 180 CE, during a period of wars and plagues. Marcus Aurelius was also a philosopher who wrote his personal reflections and meditations on Stoicism, which are known as the Meditations. Marcus Aurelius was also a follower of the late Stoicism, which stressed the ethical and practical aspects of Stoicism 
and its usefulness for the personal and public affairs. Marcus Aurelius also adopted the concept of the cosmopolis, which means the universal city, and the idea of the cosmopolitanism, which means the citizenship of the world. Marcus Aurelius was admired for his justice and piety and was nicknamed the philosopher because of his love of wisdom. Marcus Aurelius died at the age of 58 after ruling the empire with wisdom and virtue. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated.